for tuning in to Sundays at the Square. I am your host, Tony Ringgold, and today I have a wonderful guest with me. But before I get started, I want to talk a little bit about so many things that I've been seeing going on in the community here lately. Um, I'm seeing a lot of good things, um, have some people that are really trying to help out the youth in a real way, and I'm really excited about that. What I will say is, guys, it's very important to spend time with your children. Very important to pour into them good things because I've also seen a lot of negative things going on here lately. Um, and uh, hearing about some kids burning down some playgrounds and million dollars worth of damage in buildings. And the question that always comes to me is, well, where were the parents? And so, you know, we really want to make sure that we are engaging our youth um, daily, that we are keeping them involved and keeping them you know, doing some things because we don't want them to end up getting in trouble or potentially ruin their lives. Um, you know, these kids who have done this, they're now, you know, in juvenile and they're they're facing criminal charges um, among um, also the damage that their parents clearly cannot pay. I think it was around $250,000 worth of damage to the playground. And the same group of kids also um, did about a million dollars worth of damage to uh <laughs> at school here in Temple, Texas. And, you know, I just, I'm just really wanting to say, guys, you know, please get your kids involved. There are some um, amazing um, groups around um, the Unincluded Club um, with Garfield Hawk and um, Dory Collins. They're doing some big things in the community. Um, and it's a free program. Anybody can get involved. So, um, there's other um, uh, groups and recreation centers and things like that, but we just want to keep our kids engaged. And most importantly, be a parent to your kids. Spend time with your children. Talk to them. Don't always be gone. Make time to be around them so that they won't find themselves getting into things because they don't have anything else better to do. But I'm off that soapbox. Today, I want to talk to you about uh, being an artist. And um, I myself, I'm an artist. Um, been doing it for quite a while love what I'm doing. Um, but it's, it's very difficult. And today I have a guest with me. Um, I'm going to let him introduce himself, but I want to let you know why he's here. He's here because he is one of the dopest artists that I have ever met in person. Um, and I really respect his work. I really respect, you know, his, his body of work is, is really, really, it's superb. It's, um, and you know, what he's doing and, and the, 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 the tenacity uh, and everything that he has um, when doing what he's doing as an artist is something that I admire. So I couldn't think of a better person, none other than Mr. Gutter Gaddafi to come in today. Hey, how hey, you doing? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You really mean all that stuff, all that cool stuff you said about me? I do. You mean that? I do. That means a lot to me. <laughs> how y'all doing? My name is uh, Gutter Gaddafi. I am a resident of Temple, Texas. You know, originally from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And, uh, music is music is is everything to me. Uh, music is so personal to me that you know it's something that that helped. Music practically raised me. Just hmm. to be honest, like you know, I went through a lot of things as a youth and even into my adult life. And music always seemed to be an escape and a way for me to express myself and uh, you know allow others to express themselves as well. And uh, you know, music is great. So let me ask you this. When did you first know that music was something that you were really into? I have to say, probably, I'm going to date myself, too. Probably, like, 1994, like, when uh, when Juice came out and Q. <laughs> like, my uncle was a DJ, my pop, my uncle, and they used to do a bunch of crazy gigs all through Philadelphia. Were you still, you were still in Philly I then? I was still in Philadelphia. Okay. And, uh, they would be, I would carry crates and crates of records up at, like, three flights of stairs at five years old, like, just got to get, carry them down the steps, carry them right back up the steps. And uh, so after a while, I started going through the crates of records at first and reading, like, reading the credits, like, who wrote it? Who hmm. produced it? Who was the executive producer? Who owns the copyright? Like, I was into that. Like, kids was reading the cereal box. I was reading, reading records. records. Hmm. Like, okay, so this the same uh, Motown putting out a lot of stuff. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Okay, so-and-so, Sony running music right now. So I was, I was into the music, but I was also into what was behind the music right and so you weren't just into like getting on stage like even most people that do get into music or artistry they're into the stage part you are actually into the behind the scenes behind the, the production and all of that mm -hmm. that's awesome that's what i mean and that's what i'm i tell people all the time like 
I'm like an educated street nerd. Like people be <laughs> like, you so ghetto, you this and that. It's like really, man, I'm brilliant. You yeah, know, I'm I'm really brilliant, but I'm a regular cat. I'm a regular guy too. So the things that excite other people, they don't necessarily excite me. Some of the things that excite me, I know like weirdo status. Like who was reading records at five years old? Right. No one. Well, I used to do that too, actually. See, see, but... you artists, it's that artist thing. <laughs> I did. I used to do that too, actually. I used to really, actually, I used to love reading the thank yous mm -hmm, to um, the fans. Yeah, the because... back of the CD book. Yeah, because, you know, I, I was interested in knowing, like, okay, yeah, you see this person and you see them out on Front Street, but there's a whole lot of people that were behind them yes. and the things that they, that the, the people that worked with them and for them and, you know, were there for them to help them get to that next level. Yes. And so um, it was always interesting to me to see who they were going to thank. Yeah. Things like that. Um. So, 94, you got into music. When did you cut your first, like, album mixtape how old were ooh, you i think i was my but man it wasn't an album or a mixtape we was on tape deck <laughs> you, you, you could stick tissue like in a tape that's already got stuff on it and uh -huh. record over when we figured that out then eventually we stopped doing that and we just started going to buy blank tapes mm -hmm. uh that's got to be like what 99 2000 time frame yeah 98 99. so how were you Nine, ten years old oh wow. i used to always have to rap at the family reunions mm -hmm. and parties and it was just I really just like to make words rhyme. I really wasn't saying nothing. But uh <laughs> And yeah. then I've seen a video or something of you or it was a picture I and think you it was, was a, dancing. It was a video when I was dancing and put your hands up with your <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so you was always a performer too. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, okay. So you came to Temple, how old were you? I was eight years old. Came to Temple and did you like okay, I remember when I was um when I was in school, like you would start off and you would like beat on the desk, and yeah. then everybody had that one pencil, yeah. like they was cold, the, the coldest person. Shouts out Treyo and Eugene Harper, y'all boys made me. Y'all was my first <laughs> producers, and y'all ain't even know it, man. Beating on that table, yeah. Jermaine Martin, so he was beast with it. Creed, you was a beast with it. So a lot of cats used to beat on the tables, and we would rap for hours. Uh, Arinthius McCook, he wasn't no like no beat banger, but we used to like go at it and like. Lamar Middle School, mm. like, beginning of school, like, before the bell rang, we out there 10, 12, 15 deep. Do you think that that helped mold you um, into an artist? Because, you know, I remember, like, okay, I'm from Austin, but I remember, like, Courtney Whiteside and stuff. He used to get out there, and he used to, you know, freestyle, and we used to be mesmerized yeah. because he was just so dope with it, and he was able to just come off the dome and, yeah. like, I'm like, how is he able to just do that? And like, you knew he was freestyling because he would say something about, about something the right crowd. there. Yeah. 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 And I'm like, oh, you know, that I just thought that was really, that's really just, cool. That's just the thing. Like everybody was freestyling and just, you know, some was better than others. But anybody, because when I moved to Texas, like, and even today, my music is, is heavily Texas influenced now, but it's going to always have East Coast roots. Right. It's going to always have like soulful roots too, because that's the music I grew up on. That's what my parents was playing. Right. But, uh. When I came to Texas, it was like everybody could rap because it was just like, I'm going to come down. Watch me come through. through. Yeah. I'm going to pop strong. I'm going to bang screws. So yeah. I'd just be sitting in the cypher and I'd be like, but everybody rocking with that. Like, that's the lingo out here. Everybody rocking. Then I'd just be like, I got something for that. Like, I, I'm going to go out. Yeah. Radical sabbatical. <laughs> Hey, get the trip, man. Like, that nigga use all those big words. He ain't good. He just using big words. <laughs> yeah, for real, though. But Yeah. And so, okay. Excuse my language, y'all. <laughs> I let one slip. Yeah. It's a sensor. This is a family show. No. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. Okay. So, um, you got, um, you, you started, started freestyling and stuff. Like, when did you decide that this was something you really wanted to do for real, for real? Like, I want to say, uh. Juneteenth, Juneteenth, 99 and 2000. It's a cat from the city. Everybody know him. That's, you know, that do music. And a cat named Jazz. You know, Jazz Mind We Lock is real name. And, like, every Juneteenth, uh, my uncle used to have a club called Mass Appeal. We would, like, rap. And he used to eat me up as far as how the fans perceived it. But, like, every time before we a battle or something, he would be like, you going to beat me, but this my city. 
Mm. Watch what I do. So that same, I'm going to come down. All you have to do is be like, East Side, be my hood. Or shout out that East Side, man. The whole, everybody. everybody go it's crazy. a wrap. It's a wrap. Because it was that hometown. It was love. that, but it was a mutual respect between me mm -hmm. and him to where it was just like, you super dope. You know, like, you super dope too. Like, that was the running dialogue when we was like in junior high. Like, nah, you ain't fucking with, you ain't messing with jazz. <laughs> you, you ain't messing with jazz. Nah, look, Kelvin, man. Kelvin, nice. You know what I mean? Because he was at Travis, I was at Lamar. You know. But as you know, other artists really inspire me. Older cats, cats my age, and not even mainstream artists like, like I said, like Orentheus, uh, uh, Marquel, man. Uh, them boys used to go off, and I was younger than these cats, and mm -hmm. I thought I was dope. But they gave me that confidence and that hunger though too, cause like. It's okay, okay. So I like how you talk about that because everybody has that moment where like they fall off and they fall off bad. Mm -hmm. Like, what was that moment for you, or did you have more than one? Ooh, I don't think I ever fell off. Now nah, I probably had some trash verses. You mean just like rapping and, and the freestyle? Or okay, something like, like that? okay. Let me give you a good example. When I when I um, performed, um, I was doing this competition called the Paris Room, mm -hmm. and um, it was it was it was at the Paris Room, but it was called what was it called? Oh, the Showcase. Okay, and that's on Sixth Street. Um, for all y'all Austin people, hey Austin peeps. So anyway, um, I was doing this and um, it was a competition. You had a live band, you sang, you had to sing every Thursday. And I got up there one night and I sang this song by Jill Scott called Hate On Me. And I was hoarse, I wasn't feeling good, and I it was not like good. And I wanted to just jump, just like drop out of the competition because I was like, man, this sucks. Like I did not do good that night. And so then I, I said, but no, nah, I'm gonna keep going. And I came back and they still kept me for some reason. Mm -hmm. I ended up winning the whole entire competition. See, see? But that night, like it was a learning experience for me. Cause I was like, I, I gotta be on like, and I wasn't prepared. I just, I felt like I wasn't where I needed to be. Mm -hmm. So when was that moment for you for and me, what did it teach you I, I, I you put it in perspective for me it was a 106 in park audition okay. it was in houston texas right mm -hmm. now the funny thing about it is my head was through the roof i'm the freeze i could freestyle i'm the man so when we it was me big bill uh my partner marcus man oz my other partner Lil keys free Lil keys man free side uh we ride to Houston, man. Now they keep telling me get off the pedal. I'm on that gas pedal heavy. We get pulled over or whatever. So I'm a little annoyed about that. One of my partners go to jail. We still make it oh, to H Town. It was at the house of Darion. That's where the uh, 106 and Park oh, yeah, audition I've not was been at. There before. Mm -hmm. And uh, long story short, the long, the line is like wrapped around the building. Mm -hmm. So Cats is already rapping before we even get in there to get a number and get to the judges. So Cats is rapping. I'm like, let me go ahead and warm up too. I try to battle this cat. I never forget, man. He had like some all red sneakers on, a red Michael Jackson leather jacket. He looked like <laughs> Lloyd a little bit. Fly <laughs> little cat, right? I'm out there to eat him up. He just on some pretty boy stuff. Yeah, you thought man, he was just gonna eat him. Man, dude, destroy me, man. Like destroy me. And that's when I was like, you're not as good as you think. think. You, you are. gotta, you gotta keep working. You gotta keep working. You gotta keep writing. You gotta rededicate yourself to it. And I was about 19 years old, 18, 19 years old, because I had got by. All through junior high and high school like i put out little cds mix cds and passed them out at school and stuff and it was just fun but i was good at it but mm -hmm. it was just fun it was like you the rapper you know you got your athletes you got your rappers you got mm -hmm. you know your street cats in high school you had clicky. a lot of credibility based yeah, on based that, on that mm -hmm. but not really based off of how much actual good product or my work ethic and when I went to Houston, that taught me this is a big world and the competition pool is heavy. It's fierce. It's very fierce and you got to. It's very fierce. And a lot of times I think that that's something, especially when you're coming from a smaller town. And, and you know, I tell people all the time, like, they'll be like, Temple, what you what you in Temple? It's a whole a lot, lot of, of talent. talent in Temple. A lot Temple. of talent out here. It's a whole lot of talent in Central Texas, period. And people don't realize that. But at the same time, if you're in a smaller city, that's a smaller demographic, smaller number of people, smaller competition. Mm -hmm. When you coming out, you in them big cities and the main, like, you know, like that, and you... People are traveling to the cities, just, just like to, you yeah. came from Temple to go to Houston. Exactly. Somebody else came from Lil Brian. Somebody yeah. else came from Round Rock yeah. and you know, every other place to get there. So you have that um, that amount of uh, competition. And so, so then when what happened when you actually got into the audition room? I destroyed it. Like I promise, they made me battle. I had a number though. But they stopped calling out my number. They was like, "Let Gutter go with six. 
let gutter go with 12. Uh, let gutter go. Like, people was going one time, man. I had to battle with a cat, a girl. I was eating them up. I was eating them up. I'm, I was confident they was going to call me back, too. We left, and when we came out, the uh, John, because Bill went in after me. Big Bill went in right after me. And when we coming out, you come out through the back, you go through this gate, mm -hmm. and all the other contestants and people who was in there, they just kind of mingling around. And as I come out, they like, boy, you killed it. You killed it. Mm -hmm. And when Bill come out, they telling him, boy, he killed it too. He killed it too. They don't know we know each other. So the whole ride back, we like, they going to call. They going to call. They going to They going to call, they gonna call one of us because the people saying it. Now, we never got that call or that email. That's why I think, you know, a lot of that's who you know, too. But, absolutely. Uh, you absolutely. Know, it is what it is. And, you know, that, and, and, and like one thing that I think a lot of times people don't realize with artists, we get an incredible amount of rejection. Mm. An mm. incredible amount. From promoters, venue owners. Uh, people. People, period. Just everybody. And, like, it, it has to be something on the inside of you that really, really hungers for it in order for you to keep going after all the rejection that you yes. that you receive. What yes. is it that's in you that makes you want to keep going? Man, it's for the people that's, that believed in me before I believed in me. Like, my father, my brothers, my, my cousin Anderson Johnson, rest in peace to him. He used to always have this thing where he said, I could see it. I could see it, Ken Folk. That was his thing. And I used to be like, what can you see, man? You're going to make it. You're going to make it. I can see it. And at the time when he was living, it was just like, man, shut up and drink another beer, man. What you talking about? You crazy. Right. But now I knew, I know what he saw in me that I didn't see in myself. And it took me 25, 26 years, you know. And, and, and people like you, Tony, to be completely honest, that'll say, hey, man, you got to do this right. You know, business is business. You got to be more professional. You got to be on time. You got to be prompt. And when people really care about you, they got to critique you and give you things that you can grow with. Right. And if you appreciate those, you know those, they're not even negative criticism, they're really truthfully just observations of your actions. When you take those in and take that with a grain of salt and try to apply positive energy and positive effort in those areas, then doors open up for you. Yeah. 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 I mean, I truly believe in what you're doing. Like, um, <laughs> I remember the first time we met. Um, it was at Terrell Terrell's yeah. thing. Uh, what was and it you, called? It was a it was rap a explosion, cipher. the rap explosion. Yeah. yeah, and you came in and talking about, hey girl, you look like you about to go sing at Sunday's best. <laughs> <laughs> Little I did I like, know, huh? <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, he got jokes. Little did I know. Yeah, you had all this personality, and I do remember how like everybody gravitated towards you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I don't even think that you was actually supposed. to. I wasn't supposed to be in. It. I was just like you was supporting, introduce everybody, introduce just okay. support it. They were like, you got to rap. Yeah. And I remember it was certain people that really stood out to me. Reggie Everybody Wayne. that was dope. Reggie Yo, Wayne. where is he at? Man, I'm looking for Reggie Wayne. Radio, Reggie right Wayne. now. Where are you? Where are you? Where is Reggie Wayne? <laughs> Paging somebody, Reggie Wayne. Somebody tag him or find him or call Please, him Please, I ain't seen him, man. oh, man. He's so dope. I was playing some of his music in the studio yesterday, and uh, one of my partners looked at me and said, you got to find him. He yeah. Wait, he wasting natural talent. Like, like like great like super dope like great okay so it was you it was reggie wayne it was dooch 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 so dooch. dooch yeah he got that uh, yeah. in his voice i mean like who <laughs> yeah big bro <laughs> yeah. been putting in work too nice yes and um big bill big bill consistent always. yes and um joker joker montana and look what joker doing now at that time when that's that rap explosion came Joker, as far as our local scene, just, you know, Central Texas, he was, he had been obviously making music and putting in work, but he was kind of a relative unknown. And mm -hmm. when he came to that cypher, he, that, that kind of, I, I bet that, and not knowing, you know, his situation, that probably let him know that, hey, I'm, a, I'm a little better than I've been giving myself mm -hmm. credit for. And he making moves right now. Shouts out Mozart. Shouts out Joker Montana. Yeah. That whole movement, man. Trouble City, we at. Tito. Tito, most definitely one of the best rappers I've heard in my life. Yes, he yes. Puerto Rican too. So, ooh, got he that, got that whole that poppy. Yeah, he got that whole thing going for him. <laughs> yeah, like, man. he was dope. And then, um, I mean, it was just and, and you know, for me, okay, so um, I came here because I uh, started going to school uh, for music, and um, I'm trying to remember how even me and Terrell hooked up. I think we like I seen something he was doing on Facebook. I may have reached out to him. I think we met and we just kind of clicked. And um, he was telling me about what he was doing. He asked me to come in and judge it. 
And I remember being like, okay, cool, because I was new to the area. Uh -huh. And I didn't really know, you know, a lot of, I didn't know nobody really. But now you know everybody. <laughs> People ask me, do I know you? Whatever. You know, Tony Ringo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, she cool and all that. <laughs> she all right. <laughs> but yeah, and so like, um, I just remember being in there and just sitting there like, yo. The possibilities. Yo. And then I was excited because that, I think it was like that next weekend or it might have been like a month or whatever, y'all were opening up the, um, the, the studio yeah. and the clothing the clothing store yeah. and I was like they trying what? they trying you know and I came and I came to y'all's grand opening and I mean I was just like wow and then me and you click mm -hmm. you know we, we here <laughs> we, we here I tell everybody that's my brother that's my brother it's, it's what day. that is and then I heard your music and I was like <laughs> Where this dude been at? Sleeping on himself. I was sleeping on myself. Yeah. God woke me up. You still sleep? Mm -mm. Eyes wide open. Can't go to sleep. I'm 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 really glad to hear that because you know, I'll be honest with you. I'm in the same boat. Like when you got kids. You got kids, you got family life, you got crazy other stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 As you said, y'all feeling the blank. <laughs> y'all feeling the blank. Yeah, crazy other stuff, and you know, you just sometimes it's easy to forget about everything that you have to do. Mm -hmm. It's easy to forget about you know yourself. the dream. Forget about yourself. Yeah, the dream. What's the dream, gotta What's the, your dream? The dream. The dream. The dream. The dream. Truthfully, I just want to be able to, you know, not only make a living and support my family off of this music. But I want to be able to employ and and be able to make others be able to, you know, share in that process and share in the fruits of my labor. Because what's what what is what good is it to just gain a amass, you know, a fortune or amass resources and, and things like that. And you can't share them with your people, the same people that starved with you. Mm -hmm. And not everybody gonna make it. Not everybody, you can't take everybody with you, but that's really always been my dream. I always been a past first player. So Mm. I finally started to have to say, come on, LeBron, shoot it. Quit passing it. You know what I mean? So I had to get selfish to be a little more selfless. I had to focus on me instead of the team. But the team, that's my dream. My dream is for the team. For my partners and them be going through things. I could give you a job. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? You could be security. You ain't got no felonies. And you know, and security. I know, and see, and that's another thing that me and you both suffer from. The the people, um, my granny used to always tell me, Tony, you so free hearted. You free hearted, just free hearted. I'm mm -hmm. like, why? Well, I'm, I'm like, Granny, what's that? Free hearted. She said, you always giving, you giving, you giving, you give. But sometimes you can give so much to the point that you have nothing left, and there's nobody making deposits back in you. Amen to that. You want to put on Amen for your city. That. You want to help. You want to give. You want to do everything you can mm -hmm. to help the next man. But it's not reciprocated. But it's not reciprocated. And that's tough. Yeah. So what do you do then? You you deal with the monster that they created and you just try to make a better version of yourself without them at the forefront of your thoughts. You got to put your focus on you. And that's what I'm doing at this point right now. And you got to put your focus on you because five years from now, 10 years from now, I'm not going to be able to look at who's to my left and my right or any of my peers or, or, you know, business partners or whatever the case and blame them for my errors or blame them for my lack of success. You know, blame them for what I didn't accomplish. And um, right. it's just taking accountability for your own life. And whatever you believe in, if you whatever you want to do, it doesn't have to just be music related. This is for everyone. Whatever you want to do, you got to believe beyond a reasonable doubt that you are capable. And you got to remind yourself that you have to be willing. Because a lot of us are capable, but we aren't willing to put in the work it requires to, mm. you know. You just said a mouthful right there. <laughs> You just had a mouthful right there because I, you know, and I used to get so frustrated with people. I, I used to get frustrated with you too. I know it. I know it. I used to get so she frustrated. She got to get on me, man. Like, you got to get me. Because I would see so much. 
and I see so much potential. And there's a lot of people out here that got the talent, but talent means nothing. Absolutely. Let me tell nothing. you something. It means it's literally about 20% of the of the process. People think that talent is so, so important, but it's, it's it, yeah, it's important, but it's not as important as you think it is because there are a lot of people right now that are working. People make fun of like people like Rihanna. Mm -hmm. I hear people, you know, they, they talk about her a lot and they say, oh, well, she can't sing. Well, she can't do this and she ain't this and she, she ain't working. that, but she working and she branded herself and she understood the ethic. These people, when you look at these stars and you look at like people that, you know, are out here and they really are making it. They are working like 20 hour days yes. every day from the top to the bottom. Do you know that Beyonce knows the name of each of the lights that's in her show? What? Yes. She down to the T. She down to the T. Uh, like, so that's why she can charge for $500,000 and up for her, her concert tickets because you going to get the show. full show she knows like the numbers like okay no you need to do this and she can go to the soundboard and tell the the sound person what she wants them to do that's that's a work ethic right that there is. that's a work ethic when you can actually sit there and say um no i want this changed here and i like this here and no and we're gonna stage this way that's a work ethic and so that, the, and that shows i'm sorry to cut you off and no, that shows that she she values her consumer she values her fans she doesn't want to get them a show she charged that full price and give them a half price show. Right. So big salute to Beyonce for that. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. That's a that's yeah. crazy. Yeah, she does. I mean, and and so we talk about you know being an artist. We talk about what are we giving. What when you when you think of your music, what what is your music? What is it? What is it to the people? My music is motivation, and it is it's also if you listen, if you read in between the lines, I'm giving you the game. The game I had to struggle and strive for, and I'm giving you the game. I'm t I'm telling you about your publishing and your royalties, you know. I'm telling you about, you know, networking and marketing yourself. As I'm attempting to do it, I'm giving it to you for free. I'm doing my due diligence and my research and building a, you know, building a bridge. But through my music, I give it back. Right. I try to give it back. And, right. And for me, my music is just me. It's just me, and I'm. I can't put myself in a box and say I make this type of music. I make this type of music. Whatever mind state I'm in, whatever I'm going through at the moment, or if I maybe I'm in a reflective state. You know, I'm mm -hmm. reflecting on something from things past, or maybe I can even speak from a perspective of where I'm looking out of my eyes, but I'm telling somebody else's life a story or the struggle I see them going through. I just try to make stuff that people can relate to and understand and just don't cheapen it I, I could get in the booth and just say boom 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 i got the boom like that's cool that'll probably be a hit on the radio but five to ten years from now my kids not gonna put that in and and listen to the boom 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 <laughs> <laughs> you see what I'm saying? yes so okay let me ask you this because this is a this is a fine line that i walk yes i'm an artist and i want to be on the radio and hey we're on the radio now hey, hey. <laughs> But a lot of stuff that we hear as far as music on the radio, especially in the area of hip hop, and it'd be like, mm, I don't know about that. Help a sister out. Cause I'll be, okay, let me, okay. I'm, I'm gonna try not to name names. Okay. But there is a song out right now that's being played on the radio. Panda. I'm just kidding. No, it's him though. <laughs> Timmy Turner. Panda. Timmy Turner. Timmy Turner. Timmy Turner. Timmy Turner. Oh man. Ah. Oh man. I'm like, I blame the fans though for that. I can't even. I blame. can't even listen to it. Like. Mm -hmm. Like he can stop that. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't know if he if he like channeling Satan or. I don't know who it is. Is he constipated? I don't know what's going on. <laughs> That's crazy. I was like, I just cannot. It is so frustrating for me. And I try my best to like give it a chance. Give it a chance. Be open minded. But that is absurd. Yes, it is. I saw a, a video and it was like um what hip hop is gonna be like in to 2111 or something it was like a bunch of weirdos yeah they were like, like they like doing this weird <laughs> stuff and they had like these things coming centennial hats and stuff. yes <laughs> but honestly 
Honestly, that's, crazy. that's how I feel like. It's not going to be like that. Dump. It's not going to be like that. You know why? Why? Because we having this dialogue right now and other okay. people are thinking the same way. Okay. It's just up to us, I think, to gather the resources and the means to the way that the media is able to push out that image and that product. We got to. You gotta support good music. If you don't like bad music or music you support feel is cheap, you gotta support good, good music. Music. It's a must. Or you if know. you want, like that man, that's that's so true. But you know, I also feel like we're spoon fed, like what the powers that be yeah. want us to be. Yeah. Um, you know what they want us to listen to that's and what the trend. they. That's trending. This is what's yeah. in the streets. And I mean, but you know what? I'm gonna be honest with you. I've never been a trendy type chick. Like, I've always worn what I wanted to wear, <laughs> did what I wanted to do. Yeah, so, like... Individual. It, yeah. That's so. what's lacking. Individualism. It's like it's like they pressing up all these people. Like, if you go through any neighborhood or go to the club, man, it's gonna, you're going to see 15 cats in there with the same Jordans, the same knockoff designer belt. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The same Michael Kors watch. They hope They wish it was a Rolly so bad. But it's like everybody's trying to be the same and if you like don't fit into that box nowadays it used to be oh they all the same or you had to be authentic now being a copycat is it's what's cool. respected and that's cool and that's that's not i'm not with that at all i guess i'm old-fashioned i'm not with that at all like i'm in the studio 24 7 so mm -hmm. I don't really do the club like that. But when I do go out, I re it reminds me a why. The only time I want to come to your club is when I'm on your Performing. stage. That's it. That's okay, it. so I'm the same way. I've never been a clubber. I haven't. And, I, you know, recently, I, I matter of fact, we've seen each other. Yeah. Went yeah, out. To support. And to support because, shout out to. Uh, club Heavy. Club Heavy. Club in Heavy. In Temple, Texas. Y'all need to check them out club heavy yes it's real heavy it's and it's nice in there yes sir the air blow cold yes sir it's really really good they it's got really a nice, nice setup in there shots out them boys man club heavy mr man. johnny scurry club they probably jumping tonight y'all come check out club heavy man yeah and so yeah and so um went in there and like you know enjoy myself but i'm not a clubber and i feel like like you said i feel like i should have been on the stage mm -hmm. like so when I'm gonna get the mic. <laughs> uh, hey DJ. You know? <laughs> let me let me let me see that mic real quick. You know. But you know, um, you're right. You go into the club and you see the same thing. You see the girls, you know, with the uh with same the, unit. Same unit. Jaleesa sold ten of them the same unit. Yeah. <laughs> no no knock out. on you, Jaleesa. Shout, Shout out. out. Jaleesa. I let my girl Jaleesa hey, too. She, she got get the you best right, club though. She gonna get you right. <laughs> For real. But yeah, you know, and that's that's one of the things but back on the music back on the music because we don't went off on we a little bit of a tangent, a tangent. <laughs> i'm sick of it all right i'm off of, i'm sick of it y'all let's be individuals again there's nothing wrong with being yourself be yourself be yourself we're gonna take a quick break and i'm gonna bring it back with mr gutter Gaddafi. you are listening to sundays at the square with your girl tony ringo